In studio now is Professor Dragan Primaras, longtime Academy member and organizer of the International Society of Applied Biological Sciences Conference, a sister academy of AAFS. Good morning to you. Good morning. Let's go back to your home country, Croatia, where you recently hosted several Academy members. Let's talk about that scientific conference. Many years ago, we decided to have the conference which is going to bring the leading <coughs> forensic and the clinical experts in Croatia in order to provide the most comprehensive knowledge in the field of the forensic science and the clinical medicine. So our collaboration with the American Academy of Forensic Science is uh, very long, very successful, and so far we have more than 6,000 participants, 800 invited lecturers, including seven Nobel Prize laureates. Let's talk about the conference. What were some of the activities, what were some of the things that some of the attendees were exposed to? So American Academy of Forensic Science and the ISAPS are trying to have the most influential alliance in the field of the forensic science in order to bring the latest technologies and knowledge to the, and make available to every single forensic scientist worldwide. So what we are having, we are having uh, lectures, we are having uh, practical workshops, but it's always one mission to bring the latest technology and make available for every single forensic scientist all around the world. As president of ISABS, why is it important to have an alliance with AAFS? So we decided many years ago that without knowledge, without science, without technology, we cannot fight a crime. And as you know, it's becoming a huge problem worldwide, you know, international terrorism, international crime. And without this strong alliance, without education, we are not able to make a progress. So it doesn't matter if you live in the States, in Croatia, Africa, Asia, if you are not connected, we are not able to fight the crime. You talk a lot about the connection and about working together. How are these relationships mutually beneficial to each group? It's incredible. As a chair of International Affairs Committee of American Academy of Forensic Science, together with the leadership of the Academy, we are able to enlarge number of international participants. So just recently we have more 500 of them who are coming, spreading the knowledge, and also what is important when they come back to their home countries, they are educating local police officers, uh, militaries, uh, judges, lawyers. Idea sharing is the most important concept we would like to deliver to every single country worldwide. As you mentioned, you are chair of the International Affairs Committee. You are wrapping up that uh, position this year. What was your biggest challenge that you faced as chair of that committee? In many ways, to deliver the knowledge, but also to bring the leading forensic scientists from every single country to, uh, to annual meeting for American Academy of Forensic Science. So we support them differently. But what is critical, in my opinion, right now, you know, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic, we are able to align together by using the internet, emails, webs. And right now, I think that every single information which is critical for them, it's available. Right, that's true. We had to get creative during the pandemic. <laughs> you're right, you're right. So you talk about one of your biggest challenges during your time as chair of the International Affairs Committee. What was one of your greatest accomplishments, something you're most proud of? So let me tell you, right now we have a huge alliance on my uh, uh, email address, I have more than 15,000 forensic sciences all around the world. So every time when we have to deliver information, when we, when we have to share information, we have people available immediately. And I'm incredibly proud to have uh, American Academy of Forensic Science as a partner to International Society for Applied Biological Sciences because we regularly meet, we regularly talk with the most influential people in every single country, including presidents, minister of, of foreign affairs, minister of interiors. So we are able to tell everyone basically how to implement forensic science in their regular life. And as Eleanor Roosevelt said once, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. So we dream big yes. and we are achieving big so far. And 15,000 email subscribers, that's a heck of a digital Rolodex. You're, you're right. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about your new book that is being published sure. in April. You do focus on forensic genetics. Why did you choose to focus on that? And can you talk about some of the cases that you highlight in the book? So right now in my new book, we would like to show about new advances in the field of forensic genetics, including what we call molecular autopsy, including creating new forensic DNA database, including pharmacogenomics, which is critical. As you know, more than 350,000 people annually, only in the States, dying because of adverse drug reaction. And what we are trying to teach people, you know, how to apply genetics in the clinical work, or if it's necessary, how to use the genetic to, to, to find the cause 
of the dead. So basically, the book will be able, uh, available online, okay. but we are going to have indeed promotion a few different places where they can buy hard copies of the book. Wonderful. Well, congratulations on that, and thank you for your time this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you.